Welcome to the Libertarian Crusaders episode number 36. 36. And today we have Daniel Berman. Daniel Taxation is theft. Berman. Uh, full name, right? Kind of like we're right. when someone's in trouble, you say the full entire name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in trouble a lot, so I hear <laughs> I, I try to get in trouble, so I hear more people say taxation is theft. Right. Yeah. So I'm glad you're out to, to see you again uh, back on the show. I think last time we had you uh, on a segment when you came to join us for the gun rally in Richmond. Um, but there's still a lot of questions I never had. I got to ask or was still kind of curious. Uh, like one would be, is taxation of stuff your real middle name? It's, it's as real as anything else. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so there's this, um, there's this idea that people have that when you want to change your name, you have to go to the government and ask them for permission. But like, who the fuck can I swear on this one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who the fuck are they to tell me what my name can be? Um, they didn't give it to me. I'm not their property. Like what, what, where do they come into this equation? Where do they come into this transaction? So, um, and there's actually like a, there's a lot of common law that goes behind like what your name is and, and changing your name and stuff. And so, um, like when you, when you register a fictitious business name, it's really just like, it's making a public announcement, uh, which is actually one of the steps. Like they, they make you publish it in a newspaper to say, Hey, this is me. I'm using this new name. And so, um, you can really just assume a new name and use it publicly. And that becomes your name. Um, it's not your legal name, which means the government doesn't put it on the documents that they use to track you, but it becomes your name for all, for all intents and purposes and for all reality. And one day when the government's gone, this is, this will be all that we have. <laughs> will you change your name back? Yeah, I might keep it. I might drop okay. a personal last name and just be like, no, my name is taxation and stuff. Uh, there you well, go. Gotta pass keep the name it fresh on. in people's minds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we pass the name on to your future children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, for the day yeah. that we junior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, for that day when we don't have to think about taxation, we're like, what is taxation? Yeah. Why yeah. It it'll be like one of those names. Uh, th well, that's really interesting. My, my wife's first name is Ixiar and like, it's, it's, it's like Nawalt, it's Aztec. And like, she's talked to professors in like these ancient languages that like, well, I shouldn't say it's ancient. Some like her mom still speaks not well. Um, but like, it's, it's not a very popular language. It's, it's, it's kind of ancient and nobody knows what this means. So it's kind of like, oh, what's this big secret? So yeah, it'll be like that. Like the kids running around. Yeah. My name is taxation is theft. I don't know what taxation is theft means. I don't know what taxation is, but it came from my great, 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 great grandfather when he fought a war in the U S or something. I don't know. <laughs> Here is his hat. <laughs> <laughs> Treasured family heirloom. <laughs> yeah. How did this protect them? You know, back then, like, you know, you had to have big balls and, you know, big brains to kind of combat the state back then. So, <laughs> uh, so what I want to know, what got you started? Um, everybody, I guess it's always a good question. Started like what gets you got, what got you into the libertarian road and what made you, get on the path to say, you know what, I can, I can change this. I can uh, put my name in the, in the ticket, my hat in the ring, so to speak, and uh, challenge uh, these, some, some of these yahoos on stage at the uh, yeah. Libertarian Party convention. Well, uh, th that's interesting. Uh, now, like, I don't know, sometimes I get picky about words. So you said, what makes me think I could change it or want to change it? And like, I think I got to the point where I was like, I don't even know if I can, I just have to. Um, cause yeah, the, and the two things that really got me onto this path were one was seeing, um, the police misconduct, the brutality, the killing and everything else. Um, and then two was, was being personally attacked by, um, you know, by the state through their, their bureaucratic systems, um, stealing my money and, and, you know, all these other things extorting me. Um, and then, you know, when I, when I tried fighting that, like I used to, I mean, I used to fight traffic tickets cause you know, ask my parents, like I was argumentative since I was a, a little toddler, but, um, I would try to fight traffic tickets on the grounds of, yeah, let me just see if I can beat the system and, and be like, ha ha ha, I was speeding, but I don't have to pay. But then I realized, wait a minute, what sense does this make for them to come to me and say, I owe them money for the simple crime of, you know, like 
absolute nonsense. And then I found out that like this whole system is smoke and mirrors. Like you don't even need a, a license to drive. I haven't had one in 12 years and I've never gone to jail for that. Um, I, you, most of the taxes are, are completely avoidable. Um, but it's like they put this system in front of you and say, Oh, you know, you have to do this. And like, it becomes more and more apparent the more you object to it. Like I had this, um, there was this one cop, he pulled me over. Um, I, I had a Mexican driver's license on me and he pulled me over in California and he told me I need to get a California driver's license. And I'm like, why? I don't live here. I'm just passing through. And like, he had it stuck in his head. You have to do this. You have to get it. And I'm like, dude, I could be from Arizona visiting a friend. Do I need to get a California driver's license for that? That doesn't make any sense, but that's like the, they, they use those words. You have to, you have to, but of course they're not lawyers. They don't even know what they're saying half the time. So, um, it's like when you start seeing all this stuff, it's like it all falls apart and you realize that like, no, this is just smoke and mirrors. And if you obey every order that you're given with the assumption that, well, he's a police officer, he's a, he's a government bureaucrat, he must know what he's talking about. Um, then you are going to basically voluntarily sign yourself up for a bunch of crappy programs that you don't want to any, you don't want any part of. Um, and it's, it's, you know, if, if any other business were, were to do that, to get you under contract contract under like those type of false premises, they'd be sued for fraud, but this is the government. And of course they are, they are the superiors. There's, there's nothing above them to, to come in and, and kind of rectify the, the crimes that they're doing against us. All right. A lot of people don't challenge this in court. So they just kind of take it like, that's just the way it is. Nobody challenges jurisdiction. They just the way it is. Yeah. And, and jurisdiction is a big one because that's like, I mean, you can, you can fight things before they even get into court, which is a huge, I mean, it's like, you know, uh, what's, what's uh, three card Monty, right? Like it's a game designed for the player to fail. Right. Um, and like you're, th that's what the government's playing. And if the government comes up to you and says, Hey, we're going to play a game of three card Monty. You could just say, uh, no, I'm not going to play. And that's when you challenge the jurisdiction and say like, no, you, you like, you can't force me to play this game and you walk away. And, and like when I've tried that and like, and it blew my mind cause I was, you know, raised in the same indoctrination system as everybody else. Like, no, this is just the way it is. It's government authority. It's absolutely legal. And if it wasn't legal, it would be quickly overturned by the Supreme court for being unconstitutional. And, I was like, and, it, and it's like, no, all this stuff is like, it's all just bullshit that they've tricked us into complying with right a lot of the defense that they'll say would actually fall into begging the question uh and in terms of how they justify it um, right but it comes, it comes towards the constitution okay great where was the constitution in relation to the crime that i committed or, or i guess in dc right or you know um you know if it's a party to the contract of uh, the constitution saying there's a contract you know where's my signature all right. Uh, so many factual evidence that I'm um, party to this contract in terms to be under its jurisdiction. Right? They can't prove any of that. And the last thing they want is somebody actually challenging that because it throws the whole uh, Wizard of Oz curtain uh, away and people can see for, for what it is. But they, well, lose, they need the illusion because the judges enjoy that seat behind those magic robes. Entirely, like people talk about remove immunity from these cops, remove immunity from these judges. You know, that, that's, that's a big big part right there. You know, there's, there's a lot of judgments that they do, they get away with uh, a lot of pipelines to prisons for children. A lot of, uh, like even some of the prosecutors, uh, have immunity, right. And th withhold evidence in the way they kind of conduct themselves. Um, you, That's know, you, you don't want in the market at all in any kind of, uh, uh, reconciliation or just, uh, terms of resolving disputes. Right. There's, uh, when, when I, uh, when I ran for, uh, the Texas house of representatives in 2014, I came up with this accountable authority act, um, that I, I wanted to pass. And it, it had a provision in there, which, um, I, I think we need now more than ever where basically it would like, okay, if the government does something against me, I can easily go to a civil court. I can file a complaint and it'll be probably taken in front of a judge. I'll probably lose anyway. Cause of the, you know, the way that system works, but um, but at least it'll get in there. If, if a police officer or a prosecutor or a judge commits a crime, how easy it is it for me and maybe with the support of the entire community to say, Hey, we want a criminal prosecution against this 
employee of the government. You, you can't just walk up to the window of the criminal court and say, we want to file this. But I think we absolutely need that. If that court is going to be there, because think about it, you have the prosecutor, right? And he files a case, which is a case of the people of the state of Virginia versus somebody. Well, wait, wait, wait. So you're telling me the people, the, the people, not the government, the people are suing this guy for a crime, but it's, there's, there's no way that the people themselves without the government can actually go and file a crime, especially against the government who's just, you know, just more people, right? Um, it, it's absolutely insane. And when you look at it that way, it's like, yeah, they've, they've got this, like, um, this, uh, you know, this royal kingdom, you know, where, where they're, they're, you know, they're, they're in a completely separate system from us. They have absolutely different rights from us. Um, and I think that goes right back to what you were saying. Like, that's absolutely a problem that we need to fix. Like if it's a government of the people, by the people and for the people, which, you know, you may or may not agree with, um, on, on principle of, you know, like you said, who, like I didn't sign the constitution. Um, but if that's what it's, it's, uh, uh pretending to be, then equal access to that system for citizens and civilians as, as much as government employees. I think that it's a, it's a, uh, they've inverted the whole system the constitution was supposed to be what protects us from overreaching government, but they use it to apply all these laws to us all the time. And you know, it's just upside down world. Yeah. The, um, you know, it's funny to hear you say, uh, you talk about the, um, nobody signing the constitution and, you know, like the first place I heard that was from Andrew Napolitano of all people. And at the time I was like, Whoa, this is like a serious guy. You know, this isn't just like, this isn't just like libertarian crusaders podcast. Like this is, <laughs> this guy appears on Fox news. You know? So it's a, uh, it's not, and what, what another funny um, thing that you're, what you were talking about just made me think of when you were talking about driving around and, and being stopped and your license is this. Uh, and I don't often quote Gary Johnson, but he says, uh, that's the first sign, you know, you're a libertarian. You see the red light, you stop, you realize that there's not a car in sight and you just put your foot on the gas. And it's like, yeah, I mean, that not that an interesting way of putting it? Just like, we, we know that we're not hurting anybody. These are just stupid rules that uh, are designed to, to make us feel subdued. Right. And, and you know what's really interesting? Um, ha have you seen this video of this police woman and like it came out, uh, I think yesterday, she's like crying at the McDonald's because I guess she's afraid that they're going to poison her coffee or something. Cause she can't see them make it. Um, cause I, apparently they did that to some other cops. So she's like crying, like, why is there so much disrespect towards us? Like I've been working all day and I just want to get home. And you know, also, and she's like crying her eyes out and she's like, please, please, can you guys just give us a break? And I'm like, okay. Like, you know, I kind of feel bad for her. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I get it. Okay. Maybe she's not a traffic cop. Maybe she's out there like responding to domestic violence or, you know, whatever, like serious crimes. And like, yeah, she deserves some sort of respect as, as a peacekeeper. But how many times have people been stopped by a traffic cop? And they're like, they're like, look, my, my wife's at the hospital. She's having a baby. I'm just trying to get there. Please. Can you give me a break? Nope. You're speeding. You're getting the ticket. Like, Oh, I've, I've been working 12 hour shifts. Come on, man. I'm almost, I live two blocks that way. I just made a turn without a blinker. Can you please give me a break? Nope. I'm sorry. The law's the law. <laughs> like they're begging us for a break. Right. Yeah. And they'll, right. they're, they're always try to calm me down. Like, yeah, you know, it's just a ticket, you know, we'll, we'll go to court and we'll just discuss it. Like, yeah, that's, that's time out of your life. You know, that's you calling out of work. You know, and you're not going to win because because <laughs> that's a bullshit system. So well, it's, it's it want, is just like, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. You'll have, yeah, you'll have plenty of chances to fight this. That's bullshit. <laughs> they always uh, kind of come to your side as if like they're trying to help you, you know, but, like trying to help you also divulge more information. Oh, you know, Hey, you know, I, I you know, I just, is it all right if I, if I search your car, is that okay? You know, it's like, right. It would make me feel better. Yeah. It'd make me feel better. Right. <laughs> <It's> safer. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, and, and, and you know, dig into my pockets, you know, here's my pen, check my credit history and my bank accounts, you know, whatever you need, you know, here's the house keys. Go I just tend to sequester a knife in my bum hole. Would you please <laughs> dig in there and find it? <laughs> yeah. You too? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, 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 does who doesn't, right? <laughs> now, it's, it's, I would say, um, and I've hated cops since I was a kid. My first encounter was with a kid. Um, a horrible encounter with cops. This, it's always hated on the growing up. But I will say, like, what's happening today, like, where you have, like, Antifa going around just wrecking shit. Um, businesses, like, stuff in Seattle. It's like, it's a weird, like, Godzilla moment where you have, like, this, like, let them fight. And <laughs> yeah, for the cops to kind of, you know, uh, go judge straight on them for a little bit. Right. So uh, yeah, and it, it's, it's really interesting too, because it's like, you, you have to ask, um, cause I, I think Seattle's a relatively gun free zone. Um, cause it, cause it's so progressive. It has to be, but you have to ask, would they be in that situation if everybody were gun owners and, and they were protecting their own property? Right. Right. <laughs> it's like, uh, these are the circumstances when you've been put to the extreme, the government kind of places you and then. Yeah. Well, like who else are going to call? Well, yeah, the market hasn't had a chance to kind of push itself in and provide these services. Uh, yeah. So you're left with some of these, uh, psychopathic cops who kind of come in and, and fill those void right now. Like, who would you call? Yeah. There's, you know, they've, they've monopolized 911. Right. <laughs> so, you know, uh, hopefully not social services, but, you know, the market hasn't had time to come in and fill these other places that we would not want. Like cops would be mostly um, like firemen, you know, <laughs> at the station. Uh, they come when they're needed, you know, not on the roads, like uh, traffic right. fighters just waiting to nab someone and pull them in and uh, fleets them for, for money. Right. There's this, um, I, I heard a lot of really interesting stuff about this company in Detroit. Um, Detroit uh, management. Yeah. And from what I understand, it's like they charge 20 bucks a month for their service to, to have a subscription. And then if you, if you have to make a call, they charge you like, they charge you like a dollar a minute, but they said like 90% of their calls are, are under 10 minutes. Um, and they've never had like an incident of excessive force or, or anything. And they actually arrest people and I don't know where they take them, but, um, never a death. They're yeah. never found again. That's why they're so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do you do? Do you just take them and drop them off at the sheriff's <laughs> office? And be like, I got one for you. <laughs> drop them um, off Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, that's like, that's really an amazing system. And, and also what I was hearing about it was that the, the people who use them as a, um, as, as security, um, their buildings have not, not, a, not one of their buildings have burned down during the riots. So they're actually, you know, they're, they're actually protecting people. Um, the I mean, yeah, of, it, the mentality that a lot of these cops have, uh, versus the state because they're put through their own propaganda too from the state. Uh, their propaganda is uh, be fearful. Any one of these civilians could kill everyone's you. a criminal, right? These these civilians who could kill you who are criminals are also your clients, <laughs> right? Also paying for the service. So like, so they don't even view you as a client. They don't view you as someone they're supposed to protect. They view you even when they come to you that you could possibly kill them and hurt them. Uh, and just make sure you know and keep your distance and always keep an eye on you. Whereas uh, private security is the opposite. It's like a bodyguard. I'm here to protect you, right? You're most, my most valuable client, most valuable thing in the world. I put myself between a bullet and you and protect you, right? So there's a different mentality that they have in both different areas of security, uh, which is why you have a lot of these atrocities that goes on with cops versus why you have zero deaths in terms of uh, that private security agency firm. Um, and so, you know, if, if things were to change, it's funny because like they want to defund the cops, Okay, but that doesn't mean like they're not going to replace them with something else. Right. They're going to replace their PC police. They're going to replace them with like, you know, you didn't donate to Black Lives Matters. So extortion time. Right. Um, there's, I, I've, I've actually been kind of like trying to get the message out that, um, because I think there's, there is a clear difference between police and sheriffs. Um, especially the sheriffs, the sheriffs being elected. Um, a lot of police chiefs are, um, are just, um, appointed by a mayor. Um, some, some cities have elections, but, um, there, for the most part, there's no accountability. And when you look at it, it's like, it's this idea of it's, it's a, it's the idea of a corporation and corporate protection really. Um, because police only exist in incorporated areas, like they're incorporated, um, you have an incorporated city and a police department is the private security for that incorporated city. Um, and they, they operate with the, um, uh, 
uh, kind of the permission of the sheriff in that area. But ultimately the sheriff has like, the sheriff is the one who's accountable and, and, you know, uh, for, for what laws are being enforced and he has the authority to arrest police officers. And, and like, that's, that's the reality of the situation with a sheriff. You can, um, a sheriff is responsible personally for anything that any of his deputies does. But when it comes to the police, because it's in this corporation and because it's not, it's, it's not even a constitutional organization. It's, it's protected by this, this shroud of, of a corporation the same way, like, you know, you, you can't sue, um, like if you hate Jeff Bezos, you can't sue him because there's the corporation. You got to sue the corporation. Um, and he has that level of protection. It's money. I said, you have to marry Bezo and that's how you take his money. And then they're yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, from the end. But yeah, it's, it, I mean, that's, that's the reality. And I, I think if we, if we got a lot of this energy of people who are pissed off at the police to say, yeah, fuck the police, go join a sheriff. If you want to be a peacekeeper. Um, and then at least, at least the people have some accountability over that. Cause they can at least vote him out if he's, if he's doing a shit job, unlike, unlike, you know, these other guys. Um, I, I think, and you know, not to say sheriffs are perfect. I know there's plenty of corrupt ones out there, especially in Texas, but, um, but there is more accountability. And if we, it, if we start making that shift, then I, I think we're going to, you know, things are always going to move in a better direction when we have more account accountability. I have heard a lot of good things from sheriffs, especially here in Virginia, and a lot of them leading the way of saying that we're not going to enforce any uh, violation of uh, gun rights in Virginia. And that's led to a great many uh, Second Amendment sanctuaries uh, in our state. So I have heard a lot of good things. So I'm not yep. that out. <clears throat> Police chiefs can't do that. They are accountable. They're not even accountable to the people. They're accountable to the mayor. Right. That's it. If the mayor says, no, enforce these laws, they're enforcing them. That's my job. Otherwise, they're fired. Like the mayor can just say, yeah, you're not doing your job. You're fired. Yeah. I'm, uh, but I always ask like these questions in terms of like, what is one government agency you would abolish for me? It's always ABC. You know, for me, it's always defund the alcoholic beverage control and law enforcement, you know, forget all the other law enforcement. That's the one that bothers me the most. Every ABC alphabet agency has their own law enforcement. Even to, uh, Airports have their own like special teams ops and even the post office has their own. NASA has a SWAT team. Apparently. NASA has a SWAT team, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, this, it'll, it'll be adopted into space force eventually. <laughs> right. Um, and then all this kind of tying this back down to uh, the threat of bureaucracy, the threat of taxation and the, and the state, you have like your own personal kill dozer uh, vendetta against the state, uh, which is great to see how, You've not just, uh, it continues, it continues to steamroll. Cause you mentioned you are going to also uh, seek the governorship of Texas, right? Yep. Uh, what That's, year is it going to be? Uh, it's going to be 2022. Um, we're, we're going to start campaigning soon. I think we're going to, we're probably going to wait until November uh, when this general election is over because we're helping, um, we're helping candidates. We made a promise uh, during the presidential race that we were going to help other candidates. Um, and so we're going to be focusing on their campaigns, getting them all, you know, everything that they need because the, the Libertarian Party doesn't do a great job at giving candidates what they need. And we kind of want to be that organization that says say. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so like we, I mean, like we've come up with like, and we, we kind of stumbled on this. We were going to do something small and then it like turned out as a big project where we have like, we're going to have like tens of pages of like all these infographics that if you're running for office, you can just say, Oh, these are my issues. And you get to pick the pages that, and so like, we're going to have all these candidates with all these amazing like infographics that they can, they can um, distribute everywhere they go online. They can distribute with like, yeah, that one right there. Um, and, and so now we have an entire army of people running for offices, distributing this information, waking people up and not just saying like, Oh yeah, I'm running for, such and such as a libertarian, because that's, that's absolutely meaningless to most people. But if you tell them like, Hey, here's some information. And they start looking at the fact sheet and they're like, Oh my God, I hate the police. Like that's when you start seeing change. Um, that's actually one, one realization I came to, um, probably early on in the, in the presidential campaign was that the government is not our biggest threat. Our biggest threat is the people who support the government and won't, and, and like just blindly obey all of its orders because ultimately if, if we were to, you know, they talk about the, the button, you could press it and the government would just disappear. If you did that, 
all of the people who sit around like worshiping their favorite, you know, president and like they love the government and everything and all the beautiful roads it makes, they would create a new one or some guy would come along and say, yeah, you guys need some government. And then they'd be like, yeah, I miss that. And, and you'd have a new thing. So you need to change the culture and you do that through informing people about, you know, why the system that we have is so toxic. Yeah. I think it's, it's the, um, if you ever live in an HOA or like a community and there's all these regulations and stuff, and then, it, and then you live in one that doesn't have an HOA or something like that. I think that's a small example, but it really hits home with a lot of people to see like, yeah, pl- the plenty of those communities that don't have HOAs, they seem to do just fine. And, uh, they don't need somebody to tell them what color their front door can be. And, uh, so once people learn to extrapolate the small things, I think they end up, they end up realizing there's bigger ways in which we could do without the state. It's also, yeah, you, when you talk to somebody from any side of the political aisle, there's always something that they have that they hate about the government too. So if you build that bridge first, then it's easier for them to see your point where like, Oh, well, I, I agree with you on this, but have you ever thought about this? That's, that's exactly where I go. Like, cause I walk around with this hat sometimes when I'm campaigning, I, I wear the big yellow hat and you know, people are always, the libertarians are always concerned. Oh, he's going to embarrass us. This, this the message is too strong. And like, people aren't going to like us, but it's like, I go right up to Democrats and they're like, Oh, you really believe that? And then I'll turn it, I'll turn it right into like, well, well, yeah. Do you like everything that, that the government spends money on? And the Democrats are usually like, well, I don't like war. And I don't like, you know, all this other stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you know how much, you know how much money that is? That's like over a third of the budget. Um, a third of all the taxes you're paying. And do you know about all these hidden taxes that are also paying for that? And then like, by the end of the conversation, they're, they're just like, yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's, that is, that is kind of bad. We should have more control over it. And they start going into like, we should vote where our tax money is, is spent. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, well, you're getting the right idea. Like you should have control over how your own money is spent. Right. And you, you go from there and like, you're not going to turn them into a libertarian in a five minute conversation, but you get them thinking, they say, well, wouldn't you have the most control over how your money is spent? If you got to spend it yourself without having to give it to the government and trusting that these idiot politicians are going to spend it where you want it spent. Even if you, even if you can vote on where it's spent, you know, cause they're still going to, they're still going to say, oh yeah, but there's a, an emergency something. And you know, they're still going to stick the money in their cousin's pocket. Right. Um, I'm just too dumb. I'm too dumb to understand where my money should go. I need somebody yeah. to tell me. <laughs> as long as the as long as the children get it. That's <laughs> how do you respond to when they say, uh, "But you know, I I pay voluntarily. You know, tax year comes, I fill out the forms, I send them uh, my credit card information, paid. You know, it's not theft." I say, well, so when you, when you fill out all the numbers and you get to the final total at the bottom, you send them a little bit extra. (laughs) Some tip. Your mom is so sad to see tips. Oh man. Which tax do you hate the most? Oh man. So it used to be the income tax, but it's, it's become the property tax and the reason for that is a lot of people say income tax is theft, right? Because they're, they're stealing, you know, a hundred percent of your labor. Imagine if they stole, or sorry, they're, they're stealing a percent of your, of your labor. What if you worked a hundred, like what if they stole a hundred percent, then that, then you're working for free. That's slavery. But the thing is, if they're taking a hundred percent, you could quit your job and it w- wouldn't really make any difference. So that's not exactly slavery, right? Slavery wasn't about getting um, work out of like getting free work as much as it was getting the work at the lowest price possible because they still paid, they still paid for their shelter and their food and everything else. Right. Um, but they, they forced them to work. There was no, yeah, you can't sit around all day. Even if you're costing me nothing, you can't sit around all day, get your ass to work. And if you look at the property tax, that's what it's really doing because you could, you know, and I know this isn't the most luxurious life. Um, and, and not everybody, wants to go here, but let's, let's start with this for a second. You have a house out in the woods and you have everything you need. You grow your own food. You've got chickens, you've got water, you've got everything you need. You can survive. Right. But the government comes along and says, but you have to pay a tax or else we're going to kick you off this land. And everything, everything that you built is going to be sold at auction and given to somebody else. 
they are literally telling you, you have to go into town and you have to get a job and you have to work so that you can earn magic money, paper, to come pay us for the, the privilege to stay in the home that you built yourself and, and to, and to um, take food from that land and feed yourself. And so what they're doing is they're literally forcing you to work. They're forcing you into this, into this labor pool. And this of course creates a surplus of labor, which then of course, what happens when there's a surplus, the price goes down, right? So everyone's complaining about minimum wage, but it's like, okay, well, if we weren't all forced to work, we'd have more leverage over the companies, right? Eh, I don't really need to work. Uh, you want me to do that? I'm not going to do that for 25 cents an hour. Are you kidding? Give me 20 bucks an hour No, Okay, fine. I don't need it. Leave. Right. That's like, that's, that's the power of leverage that we don't have anymore. Hmm. You know, going back to this point of like, okay, yeah, but nobody wants to live in the woods with that minimal sustenance. Right. Like, like, yes, that's true. But if you think about it like this, if you have two options, right, one is the life of luxury and one is the, one is just the bare bones and you have these two options and you take away the option of bare bones, the, the, the option of necessities. And the only one left is the life of luxury. Doesn't the price go up because now there's no competition. Now there's no, well, I don't need that luxury that bad. And so therefore I'm going to save some money and forego that for a couple months. And so that's, that option is taken away from us with property tax because there is no way out of that. Um, so I, yeah, I think, I think that is absolutely the worst one. It's, it's forcing us into slavery. It's forcing us to work for, for, for poverty wages. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's forced. Yeah. It's, it's stealing everything we have. And I mean, one of the major points that, well, I work in the real estate development sector. So of course I'm aware of this, but the, uh, the fact that people who live on property that goes up dramatically in value, and then of course, all of a sudden now they can't afford the property tax because, uh, it's, it's no longer just a hundred dollars a year. It's $2,500 a year. And that that's just enough for their meager income that they can't afford it. And so they uh, right. they have to be kicked off their land or sell it. Um, and, and everybody can say how great it was that, you know, oh, well, you made all this money because you originally bought it for nothing. And now you're selling it for to a huge developer. But um, what are you going to do? It's not a money? free choice. Right. I mean, right. you're going to, you're going to either, you're going to buy another house of a much lesser value. That's like way outside of town where you don't want to go. Um, or you're going to spend all that money and the, the government's going to tax you on a gain, even though like, you know, you sell the house, you buy the one right across the street for the exact same price. And now you have to pay capital gains tax on it, which is insane. But, but this is, this is what else is crazy about that. Most first time home buyers in the U S buy their first home at, at 32 years old. Most mortgages are 30 years. So by the time you're done paying off that mortgage, if everything goes according to plan and you don't take any more money out for like home improvement and you know, all, along the lines, you're, you're paying off your house about the time you're retiring. And if you're lucky, your social security check is going to cover your property tax. Otherwise you get kicked out. Now you have to spend your social security on rent. And like, it's, it's like everything is, wait, I thought social security was supposed to be saving us. And I thought, and the FHA, why are we doing 30 year loans? Because of the FHA before that, which actually what they do in Mexico is, is similar to what they did in the U S um, before FHA. If you want to buy a house, you do 50% down and your loan is five to 10 years. I mean, think about that. You'd have your house paid off by the time you're 40 instead of by the time you're 60. Doesn't that make so much, like, so much more sense? And then the rest of the money, you, like if you wanna work till you're 60, you're earning all that money and you're stashing it away so when you do retire, you can live a little bit better. Like all of these things like just compound each other. And like, you know, we, man, talk about um, inheritance taxes. Like, you know, you, like your great, great, great grandfather might've had a nice little farm and then he died and he had to pass it. And then there's an inheritance tax. Oh, they got to sell half the farm to pay the tax. So now that farm keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And like some people are like, yeah, well, I don't feel bad for people who had like big land like that because I'm not a landowner. Yeah. You're not a landowner because the government keeps taking things away from us. You might have been a person that had a house handed down to them a few generations back, but you don't have that because the government already took it or because your great grandfather was already forced off of his land because of, of property taxes. There's like all these things that are like, like they, they've tricked a lot of people into thinking, you know, yeah, we should take away from the rich because I'm poor, but it's like, no, you're poor because the government has already robbed you of everything that you have. And they're trying to rob everybody else. And now they have your support. 
And so you're helping to bring everybody else down to your level instead of saying, Hey, no, stop robbing from people. Let's all come up above this poverty line. Let's get rid of this, this theft that the government's doing on all of us. Well, great. They also <laughs> force you in legalized tender. So you have to pay everything with federal reserve notes. Yeah. It's kind of like when, uh, people, uh, get jealous. It's like, you know, uh, it's unfair that churches don't pay property taxes. They should they should also be enslaved like us. They should also be <laughs> well, and everybody be, should be a church. Right. Yeah. <laughs> be right. tax exempt from paying property tax. Right. How about that idea? It's like, Oh, <laughs> who will build the road? Right. I mean, there's stories about like, uh, even if you live off the land and on your own place and they'll get you because one place that you can't hide is your property. Right. That's the first place that they raise the taxes. It's hard to find any other places to kind of raise taxes, but you can't hide your land. And even if you can't hide your land, and eventually they'll find it. Kind of in the same. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Conway, North Carolina, 2013. This guy was like the wilderness man, mountain man. This guy was uh, doing his own thing out in the mountains of North Carolina, and he started getting a TV show because he had this uh, camping thing for, for kids go out there, enjoy the woods and learn how to live off the land in the wilderness. Um, TV series came up. I said, like, dude, you does a great job. <laughs> Let's educate the public do a TV series. The County got word of it and the County sent their uh, code inspectors and then their County, their code inspector says, yeah, these buildings, they're not up to code. Uh, you're going to have to pay us a lot of money. You're going to have to, if, if you want to fix it, you're going to have to pay us for you to fix your own land. Right. I think that's the most ridiculous thing ever. You have to pay us permission to do anything you want with your land. If you want to build an extension, if you want to build a, a tree house, uh, if you want to do anything, you need their permission and you got to pay them for permission so you can do any kind of improvements on your land. Nearly wrecked them. Uh, but if it wasn't for the cap for the, for the people in the county, uh, backing him uh, and, and champing for him. He just would have been a lost cause. I think it would have been, uh, he wouldn't be able to, to live on his own land that he had been peacefully for, for a number of years before uh, the government came in and meddled with that. So yeah, having, having land is a dangerous thing. Yeah. There's the, you know, <laughs> that's, that's funny. Cause I've been talking about this, um, uh, your, your driver's license lately, like, one of the first questions they always ask you when they stop you now is, is, is this your current address? And it's like, why, why is that so important? Um, because they want to know where to go to drag you out of your house. They want, they want you to be afraid. Like, even if that's not something they do because it's too expensive and they really don't, but they want you to be afraid. Like, Hey, they know where I live. I better pay this money or they might come and get me. Right. They, they like, they like it when you're afraid. How many uh, taxes can you list? Can you list off on the top of your head? Oh shit, a lot of them. You really want me to try this? I go. Yeah. All right. How many types of shrimp can you be made? Pop quiz. Way? Right. <laughs> oh, you hate taxes? Name seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, oh yeah. You hate taxes? Name all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start with inflation because inflation is a tax. Um, property tax, income tax, sales tax. Um, business licenses are a tax, yeah. uh, driver's license fees, um, driver's license plate fees, uh, vehicle inspection fees. Mm. Uh, did I say gas tax already? Sugar tax. Oof. Um, let's see. Um, inheritance tax, Oof. capital gains tax. Uh, I mean, there's probably like a specific tax for like everything like there's probably like a, a, a an fda tax and like a um uh fishing license yep that's um it. import tax tariffs mm. um utility taxes cell phone tax water tax I hate the electricity <laughs> tax um oh uh self-employment tax <laughs> oh, <laughs> unemployment <laughs> tax oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, man. Yeah. There's, there's really, uh, yeah. it's, it, it's literally, it's, it's death by a thousand paper cuts. And every you know, single they, one they, of them is a revenue stream for some stupid organization uh, of people who just sit there and spin some politicians. Wheels. Like, 
I, you know what? These guys, they're stealing money for, for the permission to do this. I don't get a cut of that. What can I tax? It's, it's just like that. And this is interesting right. too. Like, okay. So the, the president gets, I think it's 400 grand a year. Yeah, that's his salary. And if you divide that by 350 million people, it's like 0 0.01 cents. Right. So like you figure like, okay, we add in all the, all the, all the congressmen and senators and you're, you're probably close to like a couple cents, like a couple cents per year that each person has to pay for their salary. And you can think like, well, that's, that's not that bad. I could spare a nickel a year, but it's like, okay, we're spending a lot of us are paying like the, probably the average American is paying about $10,000 a year in, in income tax alone. Where's, where's the rest 10,000 versus like five cents to pay all those assholes, their salary. Where's the rest of that money going? And like a, a big chunk of it, a third of it is going to military. So we can have bases all around the world and, and all this other nonsense, but it's, it's absolutely insane. And it's like, you hear about all the waste programs or like, you know, they're spending like $500 for a hammer and all this other nonsense, but it, like it, it doesn't add up. And what are we doing all this for? And then that's just the income tax. The, the, the gas tax, they collect $180 million per day in gas tax, state, state, uh, local and federal gas tax. Um, oh, here, this one's, this one's fucking insane. The, the complete payroll, corporate payroll, right? Everybody, you go to work, you get your, your paycheck, um, before taxes, the total amount that everybody gets paid before taxes is eight and a half trillion dollars every year. But at the same time, every year, the government, state, local, and federal take seven and a half trillion dollars from us. That's their revenue. That's hmm. like 88%. So we're really paying like, you know, Oh no, I'm only, I'm in the, I'm in the 10% bracket. No, you're paying 88% taxes. And it's, you know, cause like Amazon's not paying any taxes the and you know, nothing wrong with anybody not paying taxes, but it's the little guy that gets it the worst. I mean, think about it. If you're a millionaire and you got to pay, Oh, I got to pay $500 to update my, my vehicle registration tag. That's nothing. But if you're, if you're earning minimum wage and you got to pay $500 to update your vehicle registration tag, that's like, well, shit, do I feed my kids or do I make the police happy? Right. I mean, this is also another interesting argument that sometimes left to say, like, keep taxing the rich. Like, the rich pay most of the taxes already. The 1% pays a big chunk of the taxes. The 10% pay a huge chunk of it already. It's like, they pay most of the taxes already, even up to like 50%. Uh, it's like, yeah, they're already taxed and they, 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 they pay it because they, they can't even hide their land in their estates. They have tons of estates that they can't hide. Yeah. They're not trying to live a me, me or life in the woods like Eustis Conway. Um, they can't hide their, their jets. Uh, Bernie Sanders can't hide his three homes, you know, his three mansions. Um, but yeah, can, can you imagine like right now gasoline is really low. It could be so much lower <laughs> because most of it's first gas tax. Yeah, just drive over to West Virginia. I mean, it's always 30 cents higher than it is in Virginia. And, uh, and that's just the government. And if everybody could just see that, I don't understand why, like, why wouldn't, you know, and then if you could just see what it would one. be like without the U S government's uh, gas tax, you know, and you would just be like, wow, I'm saving it, money. That's, that's a really interesting one too, because they like, they really hide it, right? Like when you pay sales tax, it's there on your receipt and you're like, oh man, I paid an extra two bucks for this. Right. But the gas tax is not on your receipt. I don't think, um, I've never seen it. Um, but it's, it's on the pump, but it's like in really, really tiny print on this little sticker that nobody ever looks at. And it's like, if, because if you got that on your receipt and you saw that like, oh no, no, no. Like, and, and it's built into the price too, right? When you see the price, like, you know, 199, 299, whatever. Um, that's what you pay. Right. But if it was, if it was, oh no, 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 it's, it's 199. And then you pay, then you pay, you know, 199 and you get a half of a gallon. <laughs> you'd be like, Hey, wait a minute. It's like, it really is, it's close to like a 30% tax. If you, if you look at it, the same way that, that you look at a sales tax. So what you're saying is the yellow vest movement is legitimate. <laughs> oh, those guys yeah. were awesome. I really love how they just, they, they, they dumped manure everywhere. <laughs> that was awesome. It, the French have balls. You know, I, I, I don't like it when people crap all over the French and say that, you know, they're uh, what, um, flag, white flag waivers or whatever. But, uh, 
They, yeah. they always come out and they, and they like shut down cities usually for good reasons. So good for them. Yeah. Um, I think if you look at like even sales tax, I think it's kind of a stretch. like businesses already pay taxes on the goods that they buy and the production machinery and all that stuff, but they still have to keep paying more taxes for, for everything. There's a tax on all the goods that come in for the production line. Right. Uh, but then like, even I get taxed, uh, for my, the income that I, that I create. And then I'll get taxed again for buying stuff with the income that I spend. It's like, I re- you already taxed my income. Why are you taxing me again with sales tax? Right. How's right. that? Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the whole thing. I mean, that's like, I mean, you know, money's in circulation. It's circulating again and again and again through the economy. And their, their thing is just like, Oh, you know, it's like, it's like, a, like the fish are swimming by in this little circle thing. And they're just like reaching in yeah that one's mine. <laughs> like that's, that's all they're doing. Um, and, and they're taking, and, and, you know, like I said, like, that's why we feel like we're, you know, like, like, yeah, there's only 10% coming out of my paycheck and yeah, there's only another 10% on the sales tax. If you're renting, if you're renting an apartment, 20 to 60% of your rent is going to property tax. And it's like, and it, and it gets taxed over. And, and so that's why, like, when you compare, like we're all earning eight and a half trillion dollars, and then they're taking seven and a half. And, and then this is really stupid. There's only three and a half trillion printed money in circulation. Hmm. So, it, you know, where's, where's all that money come from? And then, you know, that goes all to the, um, the, the whole federal reserve thing where it's like, I actually, I, I kind of did a, a trick like this with my, I'm trying to think like, how do I, how do I want to do it on my final reporting with the FEC? But so, so this is the thing, right? Um, when, Okay you can't make money with your campaign, right? Um, it's like, so let's say, let's say I raised a million dollars and then that money's just sitting in there. There's nothing I can do with that. Right? Like I can't take it out for my, for myself, but I can lend the campaign $50 million and charge interest, which I, the person am allowed to receive the interest of that. So now when the campaign is left over and Hey, we raised a hundred, we we raised a million dollars more than we spent. Well, that's going to pay for the interest to, to, you know, and pay off the loan. So, wow. Okay. So that's a way you can extract the money out of this campaign. But what's, what's interesting about interest is like, that's also how the federal reserve works, right? Like the federal reserve created this money. They lent it to our economy or they lent it to the government and they injected it into the economy. Um, the government has to pay interest on this money, but we, how much, how much money is owed to the federal reserve? It's something like seven or $8 trillion. But like I said, there's only three and a half trillion dollars of federal reserve notes in circulation. I don't know if that includes, um, coins or whatever, but cause the coins aren't theirs, just the notes, right? Um, three and a half trillion dollars. So if you took all of that money and you gave it to the federal reserve, the federal reserve would be like, okay, well, there's no more money in circulation and you still owe us another, what? $3 trillion. How does that make any sense? It's, it's like this, it's this trick numbers game that they designed to basically put the entire nation into debt. Why? For the same reason as property tax, debt makes people work. And what do they want? Slavery. They want people to keep working. They want to keep producing stuff for me. Right. You always hear that. The the conservatives um, have always been big proponents of saying, you know, everybody needs a job or, I mean, I mean, both sides will say that, but it, they need the dignity of a good job, especially if they're talking about like minorities or something, you know, and it's just like, all right, guys, young, young people. Yeah. Right. They, they need to learn the ropes. Okay. Contribute right. to society. Don't we do what you're actually until we're too old to, in, to, to take a vacation and enjoy our lives. I mean, I like, I like working. I think working is good but not, not just any work, you know, something actually producing something that people want. <laughs> right. But that's, that's producing for yourself. Right. And, and, and like, yeah, some people get to, you know, be your own boss and that sort of thing. And you, you get something that you kind of enjoy, but ultimately you're serving other people. And, and yeah, there are plenty of businesses that you can enjoy, but there are so many where it's like, Oh no, I want to, I want to mass produce a million cars or a million iPhones. Um, and I need people to do this for me and I need them to do it cheap. How do we, and, and, you know, there, there was this, um, uh, this guy was telling me the, the whole history of like how, you know, the, the Irish were brought over as slaves and, and how the, you know, they basically told them, um, it was kind of a voluntary system where, where, and, and I might be totally butchering this story, but basically they would bring the Irish over and say, okay, if you work, um, you, you, you basically, uh, you know, we're, we're going to lend you the money to get here. So you have created a debt and now you're going to work to pay off that debt. And they, they made the interest so high that they would continue to work and work and work and they'd never be able to. 
Exactly. Right. And the, the whole idea of that, the, the reason that started was not because the people were here like, oh yeah, you know what would be really awesome on my land is a bunch of slaves running around. That, no, that wasn't it. It was, it was, I have all this land. I need to farm all this food so I can make some money, but I can't pay anybody to work on my land. Nobody wants to work on my land. What? There's so much land. They can go get their own land. Why would they want to work on mine? So we have to figure a system out that we can force people to do the work that I need and, you know, we'll, we'll figure out some, I'll make some big promise to them about how they're going to get like this big piece of land, but it's all just like, you know, like it's the same with any loan, right? It's like, oh yeah, no, it's only 9% interest. And like, people are like doing the math. Oh, well, 9%, that's not a whole lot. And then it's like, oh wait, but compounding interest and like, you know, it's, you know, all this other stuff that comes into play. And it's like, oh wow, this is actually a lot of money. Um, this isn't the, this isn't the great deal that I thought it was. Um, you know, this, this is, um, people are always like, we're, we're always falling into these traps and that's, that's what this system is that we live in. And when people are saying like, Oh yeah, we need jobs. We need jobs. It's like, no, you need to get off the plantation and stop begging for, for slave work to do. Right. I think, uh, you know, income tax was supposed to be temporary. You know, to help support the war. That was uh, Milton Friedman's uh, most regrettable moment of his life as his greatest sin. Because uh, there was a problem that came to be that, yeah, people pay their taxes, but people are late, you know, and property, all, all different kinds of taxes. So why don't we just uh, have the employers take for them withholding tax? That's what it created. Uh, continue to take throughout the entire year. And it's up to you to decide whether the government took too much or too little, right? Uh, put it on your plate. Uh, and, and that was a way to fund the war. Uh, but you know, all these kind of temporary measures never stay temporary. And it's like, like, why, why stop? <laughs> like, hey, there's, I, there's nothing more permanent than a temporary government program. <laughs> I, I think that was a Milton Friedman quote, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's insane. And, 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 you know, I, I, so I've been, I've been studying these guys who say that there's no law that says you have to pay the income tax for, you know, for, I don't know, over a decade now. And like, and it's, it's like, I could never get my head fully around it until a couple of years ago. Um, cause it really is that, that kind of complicated what they've created. But I was like, okay, but okay. So let's, let's say this is true. Um, and I totally believe it's true now, like with, with my understanding of it, but like, you know, uh, maybe a year ago, I was like, I was like, okay, if this is true, that there's no law, how did they, how did they implement this? I mean, how did they like, one day there's no income tax and the next day everybody's paying it. Like how, how did that, like, how did people just come to accept this? And what I found out was that cause the income tax was passed in 1913 and the, the way it was designed and this is the loophole that they, because the, there was, there were two income taxes before this and they were both ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme court. The way that they were able to get this one passed, it had nothing to do with the 16th amendment. It was because this is not a tax directly on individuals and their income. It's a tax on privileged income from the government, right? So basically, if you go to the government and at, like, if you go to any business and say, I want to contract with you, right? They can negotiate the terms, right? And if they say, well, yes, you can, you can set up a store in Disneyland because we built all of Disneyland. You can set up a store in Disneyland, but you have to pay us tax. Okay, you sign a contract you agreed to that voluntarily. Um, with the income tax, if you go to the government and say, I want to do something for you, the government, I want to have some sort of contractual arrangement. And the government says, okay, fine. But out of all the money that we pay you, we're going to tax some of it and, and keep, which makes absolutely no sense, right? If the government, why don't you just pay me less? Like, why are you going to pay me and then take some of it back? That's totally backwards. But that's what this system is, right? It's, it's considered an excise tax, which is an excise on a privilege. And the privilege is working with the government. And so what happened was in World War II, when like the entire economy was based on money coming from the government, oh, we got to get that government contract. Let's, you know, let's make, uh, let's start farming all this stuff for the soldiers. Let's start creating all this, all, you know, all the food products, all the, all the steel and everything so we can build the warships and everything else. All of that was coming from the government. And so that's, well, oh, you want the government? You got to go, you got to fill out the, the forms and you'll get the government stamp and you're working for the government now and we can tax you. And then when the war was over, people had just become so accustomed to that system that it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah just keep filling out the forms. Like I said earlier, because you have to, 
And that's their story because you have to. And people are just like, well, it's the government. I mean, they wouldn't lie to me. Right. Um, and so that's how, that's how we ended up in the system where like everybody believes we have to pay the income tax that we actually don't have to pay. Right. There's a lot of self-reporting and, and in a way then you kind of agree to their terms mm -hmm. uh, and give validity to it. And which is difficult then to, when you go to court, because you already submitted to it. You said, you said right here that you owe the tax. You, you sent us the form. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly. And, and like, that's one of the most important things that's, that's on that form is not the amount because, because they'll do this, right? If you don't file your return, they'll do a substitute file for you. And they'll say, this is how much you owe us. Um, why don't they just do that in the first place? Why don't they just send you a bill and then you can pay the rest of the bill. The, the reason they do that is because the, um, the, uh, uh, the 1040 form is actually, there's other, th it's not the amount that is the most important part of that form. It's all the check boxes at the top that say, basically, um, I'm working for taxable income and, and all of this money that I'm writing on this sheet is taxable. And, and that's the worst part. So now it's like, Oh, well, these numbers, like it doesn't matter what numbers you put. I mean, of course, you know, if you don't put big enough numbers, then, then they will charge you and they'll say, Oh, well you committed tax fraud now. Right. Cause you put the wrong numbers and you have to sign it under penalty of perjury. Right. Um, even though nobody's a tax lawyer and even though if you have a tax lawyer do it for you, it doesn't matter. You're still signing yourself personal liability. Um, it, that's, that's what it is. And, um, it's, it's, it's just, it's mind blowing. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to plug a book. It's not mine. I don't get any money for it, but shattering the myths by, by Dave champion. Um, that was like, I've read several books. That was the, that was the best one that really steps through like all the codes and like explains, you know, this whole thing out about how it actually works and, and how to get around it. But, um, yeah, it's, it is, it's, it's an ingenious, as much as I hate it, it's an ingenious system that they came up with to trick everybody into this. And if they want to get you, if they can't get you any other way, they'll get through their taxes. Like Al Capone. There is no factual evidence that anyone has in history that he killed anyone and did any harm. None. The only thing he ever went to jail for having a gun on his person and tax evasion. Wesley Snipes, tax evasion. That's why he was missed well, was for a couple of years. Wesley Snipes was actually, so this is, this is a big, and, and I, I don't fully understand the Al Capone story, but Wesley Snipes, you're talking, but I don't hear you. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? I said that his lawyer, yeah. I heard is what messed it up. Yeah, exactly. Well, but, and this is the thing, like people think, Oh, if you don't, if you don't pay your taxes or you don't file your taxes, you're going to go out that way. But no, he actually filed his taxes ahead of time. Like he, he filed and he was charged with a fraudulent return and, and I think money laundering and some other stuff too. Well, like the, you know, the typical mob move is they don't uh, report, you know, a whole subsection of their business cause it's an illegal, you know, it's not allowed. So they only report the front front storefront or whatever. Oh no, this is like, this is like on the, if you go to the IRS website, you will find this. It says, it says something to the effect of, it doesn't matter if you got your money through illegal means, you still have to report it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, what do you think of the people who are just like, you know, I wish I could come up with a good argument to not file taxes. It's just that, um, the government is a monopoly on force you know, and they've got more guns than I do. And ultimately, if they want to, they'll use this as a reason to come to my house and uh, shoot my dog. I think, I mean, it, it is really difficult. Um, because I mean, we see this all the time, right? We see that we see the police arresting people for things that they shouldn't be arrested for killing people for, you know, killing the wrong person. Um, we, we see this all the time. And of course the IRS is, is a big fear that people have. Um, the IRS has really been cut back a lot lately. And, and apparently right now, even, even before coronavirus, they were like really far behind on like all of their, their paperwork and everything. Um, and they're really not as big as, and scary as they used to be. Um, but a, a lot of people, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say this too, like, you know, before I get into like how some people deal with this, like, we can't just ignore the problem, right? We, we have to come to an understanding as a society that this is wrong. And we have to stop it. We have to, whether it's repeal the laws or repeal the government, um, we, we need to change this, right? Like we can't, uh, like here's an example. There was, um, I grew up in California and I found out when I was like 
maybe 25 or 30, that there was a law that made it illegal to throw a Frisbee on the beach. But like people would go there and throw Frisbees all the time. It was just never enforced. But any cop who found out about this law and just like was having a bad day could totally be like, hey, you with a Frisbee, <laughs> you're under arrest. So like, we can't just ignore the law and then like, oh yeah, yeah, it'll, it's good now because they're not collecting because at any moment they can just say, oh yeah, you know what? We're going to start collecting right. again. And the law like is still there. So increase, everything's in place. Increase like it's functionally, people just don't pay taxes and they don't get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, but we need to we need to come to an understanding as in like the authority of the law has to change, but then also the understanding of the people to uh, to accept that like this is this is morally wrong and we need to end it completely. Like that's there you you can't have one without the other. Right. I've and and the property tax like we're about to catch up here on the hour here to wrap up. Um, like if I were to say like what's one tax that uh, I would abolish? I would say inheritance tax. Um, but like you mentioned earlier, property tax is also a big one. There's a guy in DC, his name is uh, Coleman, Benny Coleman, uh, happened maybe about 10 years ago. He had $134 uh, property tax payment that he had to pay. He was suffering from dementia. Uh, but the house is already paid off, veteran. Um, the Don't DC government says, uh, nope, put a lien on the house, sold it off to investors, foreclosed it, threw him out on the street. All right, yep. the street is homeless now. All right. Yeah. And, and so what did he, what did he lose? Um, but the, like, let's say the house was like a hundred thousand dollars. He lost a hundred thousand dollars, right? It was $174,000. That's, that's insane. Yeah. And, and, and here's another way to look at it too. If, um, do you know what your property tax is? Like your percentage percentage wise? Uh, I could, I could pull it up right now. Actually. Is it like one, uh, one, two, three percent ballpark? Do you know what? That sounds about right. Um, it's, it's confusing the way they set it up. Yeah. I never paid like, much attention. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, that is the ballpark somewhere between one and 3%, I think. But like, so think about it this way. Let's say you have 3%, right? That's, that's along the high end um, of some states. Um, Cause it's, it's not just, it's not just the state sales. you got your state, your County, your local, if you're in a city, like they all add up, right? Some people, they're not property taxes. They're just taxes tied to your property. Like in Texas, they have school tax, which is on your property tax bill, but it's not property tax. Um, if, if, you're, if it's 3%, right? And if you bought a house that's, let's just say it's 100,000 and let's say the property value never goes up. It's just 100,000 like forever, right? You are forced every 30 years to buy back that same property from the government. Mm. 30, 30, 100 into three is about 30, 33 years, right? Every 33 years, you have to buy the property back again. You leave it to your kids, assuming there's no inheritance tax. They're, every 33 years, they have to pay $100,000 to have that house still be theirs. And the next generation and the next generation. And it's, they don't stop. When is it? When is it, 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 is, it is literally a perpetual contract. And like, imagine, it, like, imagine like, you went to, you went to like the cell phone store and you were like, yeah, I want, I want to buy a cell phone. And they were like, okay, you have to sign this contract and it's forever. <laughs> <laughs> like you, what? No, that's, can I do a month to month thing? No. Like a lot of people would be like, yeah, screw that. I'm out of here. And the, and the but, Democrats would be complaining. Oh, that's a, it's an abusive corporation. That's <laughs> abusing people and destroying their lives. Right. But it's, this is exactly what the government is doing through property tax. I pay uh, one thousand three hundred and twelve dollars and fifty eight cents a year. That's one hundred nine dollars and thirty eight cents a month. Property tax, uh, and it goes higher every year. Yeah, and it's it's you know in in thirty years or you know, I don't know I mean, it would be nice to retire a little bit younger, right? When you're still like able to you know do things that you enjoy and have all this spare time, and you're not like old and need to go living in like a like a like an you know an old folks home. Like the next virus, that'd be nice, right? Well, uh, prison you into to to die, right? Yeah, yeah. You build your you build your own nice little prison, <laughs> right. and that you get to pay for, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, well, insane. coming up on the hour, I want to say thank you so much for enlightening us a lot on the taxes. I mean, like for us, it's like it's a it's a dead horse, like taxation stuff done easy. But there's a lot more to it uh, than just like the nuanced phrase to it. It's everything's taxed. We've been taxed to death. Um, people talk about defunding the everything. You know, what about defunding all these social programs, socialized programs, 
because we want welfare, not socialized welfare. Um, but that's built on the back of tax slavery. That's built on the back of uh, robbing from our time and our money that could be better spent in the direction we would want to spend and, and where we wanted to head voluntarily, consensually. Um, so I guess I'll wrap up with asking uh, each one of you guys <laughs> as we uh, close off, which tax would you guys abolish first? And for me, it would be inheritance tax because 50%, that is a lot. That is a lot. That's, that's half your estate gone to, to the state, all right? Instead of to, to your kids to continue to pass on. Imagine if, you know, sometimes these communists or Democrats want 100% inheritance tax. Then what's the, what's, the, what's the point of working and building up towards anything if you can't pass it on to your kids, to the next generation? Uh, it will stop uh, productivity, I can see it, and that kind of uh, progress. Um, what about you, Kurt? Yeah, uh, it, to me, it's always been income tax, but uh, I've heard some really great arguments for a lot of things. I don't know. I think I have to err more towards like property tax now. But one that bugs me a lot is because I'm a handyman by trade is like licensure taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to pay to prove to somebody that I can fix them. Like I have to let this third party say, yeah, you have to pay me first before you can go fix something for somebody else. No, if they don't like the service I provide for them, how about them not pay me? All right. Yeah, I'd have to go with the inflation tax. The Federal Reserve, essentially. That's what I mean. <laughs> Proper libertarian response. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I, I would probably say um, the property tax because that's the one. I mean, look at what's happened right now. A lot of people are out of work because of the coronavirus. They're not paying most of these taxes. They're not paying gas tax to get to work. They're not paying income tax from their work, but they're still paying property tax and they don't have any jobs to pay with it, uh, to pay it with. So yeah, I think that's, that is the worst. Right. For a minute, I thought you would say, Kurt, that it would be uh, tax stamps on guns and everything. <laughs> ah, for sure. <laughs> uh, thank you again so much. We wish you great success on your campaign. We'll love to have you again uh, when I get started and ramping up for governorship of uh, Texas. Um, with those watch, Absolutely. stay liberated. Get off my property. Print guns, not money.